guys can see screen so i think it's time for us to start the youtube live as well all right seeing a few people join there as well uh, i'm going to a little bit of a confused class is going to be because you know too many things happening i'm going to open q and a bye can you share your screen again what's up with zoom every time i have to stop and reshare okay i'll stop and reshare there we go all right hi everyone on youtube uh, and hi everyone in the class as well i see a few people we'll wait for two more minutes then we will start as usual we usually start at 603 but until then let me open the zoom chat and if anyone has any questions feel free to let me know this is the agenda for today it'll be a very short class maybe 30 40 40 minutes of talking and then you know we'll go from there all right few questions few questions few questions motion doc i will take at the end of the class maybe not right now uh completed the assignment let's see oh nice that sounds pretty good real time redis driven websocket hub now my only question is did you use websocket or did you use socket io because socket io has a adapter um that lets you do this very easily let's see you did use websocket so that's pretty cool later on not right now youtube comments i think i will only take at the end of the class right now um i'll just be you know going over the orientation we'll start in another minute um and if there's anything wrong just let uh rookie know on discord guys he let me know but i think seems pretty decent over here i have a very weird setup i have two laptops here some food ipad yeah pretty messed up all right 702 we're on time hi everyone welcome to the orientation class for 1 to 100 uh we weren't supposed to have a class this week the reason was a discord poll which was heavily skewed towards a break so this week is officially a break only i don't think we'll have anything tomorrow unless we do an ad hoc session like this today i just wanted to take an orientation class so that you know next week onwards we can purely focus on learning um so this is the 100x devs cohort 2.0 1 to 100 orientation class what does 1 to 100 mean it means the second part of the cohort will where we will be doing some advanced stuff 0 to 1 even though it's officially complete there are some videos that are being added and throughout april if you are in 0 to 1 you can attend live classes and get access to all the recordings the things that we are going to discuss today include going over the things that are coming this week so i'll be posting a bunch of offline videos i'll just take you through what those are the titles um going over the syllabus of 1 to 100 one more time understanding from a high level what is the goal of this part how your learning might change a bit compared to 0 to 1 0 to 1 at least if you were a beginner might have been very grueling 1 to 100 why might not be because you know these things are less coding more you know uh, high level stuff so yeah just understanding that a bit knowledge dump uh, where to contribute if you have gone through 0 to 1 really well or even moderately well you should start to practice yourself where can you practice and you know what are the repos that if you look at and can understand is when you can start applying if you don't understand then there is a knowledge gap um going over some prs and reviewing them on daily code uh, we did this on thursday or wednesday i don't know very randomly um i was working out of a cafe and i was on discord active for something and then for one hour we just reviewed pull requests i think it was a decent knowledge gaining very passive knowledge gaining session where i'm just reviewing pull requests and telling what's right what's wrong merging all that jazz uh, so we might do that today at the end of the class before that we'll be setting up daily code as well so some people that day only asked okay can you help us set up the project locally even though i wouldn't recommend you know getting handheld setting up a project this is the only thing that you shouldn't be handheld on this is the thing that you should try yourself uh, i'll still take you through the steps even though you know it's just i'll just be reading the readme and you know setting it up um going over the lead code pr so i don't know how many of you know nimit he's one of the biggest contributors he yesterday night created a pull request for adding uh, a lead code like submission to uh, daily code it's a pretty big pull request and you know written very not i haven't read the code so i don't know if it's written very well but my point is the he is one of few people who understands priorities okay this needs to be done this is the leanest way to do it let me do it so i want to go through that pull request today if you want to understand how i would say anyone you know in a startup would build something like lead code then this is a good pr to look at we'll be looking through that and we'll keep it short 30 minutes but you know after 30 minutes feel free to drop off we'll still keep coding going through pull requests coding a little bit more that's a high level it's an extra class so you know for the first 30 minutes stay feel free to drop off after that 
with that i think that's enough context uh, if you just joined feel free to read over here i'm going to proceed let's get right into today's class what's coming this week so from monday to friday hopefully around wednesday ish there are three you know top of the stack videos for me it's certificate management uh, this we skipped when we were deploying both front ends and back ends so i'll quickly take you through if you have deployed a back end how can you attach a certificate to it open api spec this has been pending for a while uh, it's also present in cohort 1 but i'll still re record and auto generated clients given you have an open api spec and the merchant app in the ptm project uh, the ptm project sort of already is very big it's four classes eight hours um, so we skipped the merchant app but a few people wanted this there's also something extra to learn here so the merchant app will be the third thing that will be coming up this week uh, if all of these sound very foreign then you have not gone through you know the cohort very well uh, so i would urge you to do that and you know not skip classes because if you try to do this directly you won't be able to because there is there are four classes of 8 hours before you reach here cool syllabus let's understand 1 to 100 i think i've gone through the 0 to 1 syllabus many times now um so i'm not going to again uh, but it's you know basic web development some extra advanced devops and backend on top um 1 to 100 uh, from the beginning has been very actionable and very you know if you are giving an se interview a senior engineer interview a lot of these questions will be asked to you most of the times you will not be asked to implement any of this uh, because you know it takes time to implement let's say you know advanced backend communication but uh, we will be implementing it like throughout the cohort whatever we understand we'll be writing code for it um, but usually these are just asked in an interview and when you join a company when there is a big project over there then you decide ki acha we are going to use let's say you know load balancers because the scale will be very high or message queues because two backends need to talk to each other so this isn't highly you don't practice this a lot um which is why i will keep repeating this ki 0 to 1 is very good comprehensive things that you should learn and practice a lot these things you don't write on a day to day basis anyways uh, but they are asked in interviews ci cd is another good example of this ke you are not changing your ci cd pipeline very often um you have a devops team maybe a devops engineer who's you know taking care of this and you know bunch of other things here but these don't change very often for the same reason these are not you know things that you even if you don't understand them you should understand them well from the top even if you don't code them well it's fine you know you'll get by by googling a bit but creating a website writing the back end for it these things you code on a day to day basis very often so you know 0 to 1 is where you should practice a lot 1 to 100 is going to be slightly more chill and you know if you understand it well from the high level and then code it i think should be fairly straight forward these are the topics not going to go through them again and again but um you know a bunch of devops i think this part will be super interesting when we reach kubernetes and monitoring um maybe even container orchestration aws if you always wondered you know every cloud has its own way to do object stores cdns load balancers uh, or you know kubernetes clusters we'll be going through aws but you know all of this knowledge should not be exactly repli replicable but like fairly easily replicable to google cloud or something else um what else is interesting here yeah horizontal and vertical scaling we've discussed this a little bit we've not implemented it yet uh, in 0 to 1 so we'll be doing a bit of this what else a bunch of system design things you, that that are usually only asked in interviews unless you're working at a microsoft i don't think you ever worry about oh should we choose availability or should we choose you know partition tolerance uh, but again something you should know rtc we have done we've done web sockets um we'll do web rtc if we get the time we'll do real web rtc but you know basics of web rtc we will cover we have covered this few times now once on youtube once on cohort 1 so you know but it's hard uh, it's not very the first time you're doing it, it's not very easy it's not very needed right now anyways you know web rtc market is a little eh -eh. so we'll see if we'll do this um captcha and ddos protection is interesting that's pretty much it that's a syllabus for you to screenshot you know uh, we've done a little bit of it we've done advanced backend communication a bit and you know message queues um but yeah still a lot to cover so that's a brief uh, projects zero dha we may not be doing uh, we might be doing it as well but this i mean it's not zero dha we were building something else uh, like a core exchange we can actually do it i don't know uh, zapier will definitely be building i might be replacing zero dha with something else i might not either the reason is kemo zero dha or an exchange might be covered in the web3 cohort so it'll just be repeated things on in both the places still happy to do it but you know i think you can learn a little bit more if we do something else here we will see um zero to one we did i think to do we did paytm we did medium um here also you know we'll keep it uh, candid and you know do a bunch of polls and decide all right real world open source contributions may in zero to one we did a bunch of gsoc project contributions set up here we'll do real projects as in you know some companies the only goal would be to not spam them and you know keep it very uh, we have repos that you can spam that we own but if we are doing another project don't spam them um 
but yeah that's that will be what we'll be covering in this third part these will probably be you know recorded videos very similar to gsoc cool that's the syllabus a bunch of points that i wrote down you know very randomly uh, before the class so let's go through them one by one very quickly zero to one is great resource for learning most things in full stack um, one to hundred is extra extra but jumping directly to the extra part is not recommended the reason is you will understand one to hundred if you have not gone through zero to one um, because as i said it's a lot of high level stuff um, understanding react hooks and creating a custom hook is you know used much more than or you know uh, much harder to understand then kya this is how you create two servers of course it's very easy to understand kya not there is one machine then there is two machines now load is balanced between them so 1 to 100 will give you the perception that you know ic stuff you know how to scale back end systems but when you open a front end project and when you will be given a task to you know change something in the ui you will get confused understanding the react hook so the primitive things that we have done um, in 0 to 1 are the things that are harder that people ignore uh, and you know directly feel like jumping to 1 to 100 because it's easier 1 to 100 you will see gets you know creating boxes is much easier than writing code uh, that would urge you to focus on writing code and you know if you've skipped a lot of classes here go back to them um we'll keep implementing projects in 1200 and writing code uh, as i said creating dabbas are like it's fairly easy for me also for you also it's one of the easiest classes the most retention is in a classes where you're just discussing system design um but you know after we discuss system design we'll also try to write some code and replicate all that we've learned um devops part that includes kubernetes monitoring this is interesting because it's going to be fairly you know uh, a new way to deploy backends uh, and both deploying con via containers and monitoring is something that most companies don't even worry about uh, and you don't have to like for good reasons you don't worry about them because these are things you need at a very big scale um, so this this is this will just be something new and you know again feels a little magical okay, oh, you're able to monitor the number of requests that are going down which pro probably means if your system is ever down you get alerted or you know get a call whenever your system is down things like these uh, so that will be a little i feel it'll be pretty interesting um no pressure to attend live 1 to 100 is 0 uh, to 1 definitely there is pressure to attend live because you know you can ask doubts things like these 1 to 100 is fairly chill uh, and i don't think there will be a lot of you know doubts doubts um because most of the class will be uh, you know fairly ad hoc creating boxes as i said uh, you don't need 1 to 100 to start applying to companies this is another thing you don't feel the pressure can i will first complete the code then i will start applying if you have gone through 0 to 1 well if you have started to build projects if you can set up open source code bases understand other people's projects it's good enough 1 to 100 is cherry on top um if you're applying for an se role then most probably they'll ask you some of you know this okay capacity estimation uh, difference between polling and web sockets load balancers how does your backend communicate they'll ask you these things they'll not ask you to implement them um but zero to one stuff is you know the thing that's actually enough to you know provide a value to a company write code and you know create front ends and back ends so again i would urge you know focus there don't try to chase little bit of everything chase a lot of depth of 0 to 1 a depth in 0 to 1 is much better than you know breadth in both the cohorts few good projects to look at if you feel like yaar i have gone through the videos i feel like i understand things i don't know if i've coded myself or if i've copied i don't understand if i'm stuck in tutorial hell so what you can do is go through a few repositories i am posting only our repositories the projects that we have created so that if there is a spam it's contained um but there are a lot of open source libraries that i've talked about i'm not going to now because you know they'll get spammed uh, but these are also you know fairly decent projects or pretty there's a lot of activity in these projects there's a lot of issues that are being made that are needed to be fixed so you know even if someone else fixes the issue try it yourself and you know build it yourself how does it doesn't really matter if yours did not get merged what matters is can you build it were you able, able to build it at the same level for example uh, the pr that nimit made yesterday for lead code that i was just going through a while back um, can you do it yourself can you build uh, uh, yeah can you build a uh, you know add lead code to a project that already exists by add lead code i mean you know add submissions problems test cases things like these uh, so yeah there will be there are standard challenges when you set up any repository be it you know this or a different one if it's not your own repository if you did not you know uh, create it from scratch you will have some sort of a learning curve and the best sort of skill other than you know learning 0 to 1 or general full stack is understanding other people's code um so you know practice that here there is daily code daily code is the website that we use to post our projects so if you go to projects.handexf.com all these slides that you see the code for all of this the code for you know 
this was added yesterday for example categories uh, now in dsa we are adding the thing that nimit is working on is you know if you open a specific track which is in do- oh there you go he can you know post a problem statement on the left have some lead code like submission thing on the right uh, so you know things like these there are 10 such things that can be added uh, so yeah that's there will be a lot of activity here uh, i think there are like 40 pull requests open i'm trying my best to get through them and i will uh, sort of is a priority for me to you know review all these um soul dispenser is another you know real use case we need to work on um, the problem that is happening right now is all these bounties are getting dispersed in a very unmanageable way uh, for example you know if there is ever a merge that happened that i don't know dispensed five dollars or ten dollars the problem that happens is that person needs to uh we need to <laughs> this person needs to get in touch with the moderator send them their bank details send the sometimes pan if it's a big amount then you know we need to transfer so that becomes very unmanageable um and crypto solves this crypto doesn't solve a lot of things but solves this this can be solved with, without crypto as well uh, but the idea is that you know people can post their crypto addresses and they can just get the bounty directly by clicking a button and there does not need to be a human involved uh, this was created by someone from the cohort um they've also submitted it to the hackathon we'll see how that goes um standard open source repositories i'm not giving out names uh, but there are a bunch of them decentralized fiber is another one this might pivot to something else you know uh, something like a place where you can sh- get jobs show your proof of work things like these uh, this is also being led by someone in the cohort all of these are in the same org so like feel free to look at them feel don't spam them like don't feel free to spam them uh, but you know even if there is an issue that's in your head and you want to try it out for example i was going through daily code right now someone created an issue which i don't know if it's needed but it's fine it they practice worst case i you know close it where did it go uh yeah this one this actually <laughs> might be needed because you know they just converted this to a toggle uh, rather than having this i like this more you know having a fleet of these but as, as i <laughs> resize this i realized you probably need something else. so yeah it's like uh, things like these you know that might be issues in your head worst case they get closed don't feel bad if they get closed uh, worst case you don't got to get a bounty that's fine as well your goal is to learn not to earn even though you know you might earn a bit um, but even here like in the real world the top 5% is making most of the money via bounties so you know if you're not in the top 5% it's still fine uh, focus on learning practice matters much more at this point compared to learning new things as i said you know you can attend 100 different classes uh, but whatever you have attended make sure you're spending a lot of time there uh, versus you know attending you can still attend extra classes as i said these are going to be very chill classes uh, you know at least during the first one hour you're going to be uh, dabba dabba okay connecting systems things like these um, after the, the first hour it will be a bunch of coding but so you can feel free to attend uh, but i would still say you know now is the time for you to you know take things in your own hands and start to code cool that's all i had for today uh, let me leave it here uh, i will take one round of questions we start we close a little bit early um, 7:20 um, then i will do a setup of daily code um, we'll be going through how to set this project up I, i'm going to repeat this this is something you shouldn't be handheld with there are all the steps here you should try them yourself but i will still set this up locally like i would usually um then maybe we will can try to solve an issue or we can just review pull requests i'm open to ideas over here but that's going to be the rest of the class that's all i had for uh, all i had for today a few people on youtube as well um but let me open chat and answer one rounds of question in case there are any and then we'll go from there and if there are no questions even better we can just proceed and start to set up daily code CPR is down. Soul Dispenser is Web three project, sort of. It's both Web three and Web two. Soul Dispenser. I don't know if I have the video. Mm, it is. There's a Web two part. There's a website where you can track how much you've been paid. There's a website where you want to probably eventually add, you know, your PAN card, things like these. If your amount go above a certain point, so on and so forth. Um, will you review? I will review PR today. Um, let's see how how many we can go through. But yeah, cool, 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 cool. All right. Let me not open chat after. this seems like this is related to i've been learning rust there are a few companies hiring for rust uh, i don't want to say the name when you all go there but ping rookie i'll tell you um can you check this out okay slightly unrelated questions let's get to setting setting up the project guys uh, the project is called daily code what is daily code it's just this project it was called daily code for some random reason now it's just projects.100xs.com it's very active by which i mean you know dsa is being added by someone and the rest of the slides are mostly being added by me or someone else uh, so there's a lot of activity here um, there's a lot of people using it 
So let's understand how do you set up this project and explore it a bit. Uh, if you were, you know, if it's the first time you were looking at this. Um, step one, in case you want to follow along, let me just post a link to it everywhere. So in case you want to follow along, feel free to let me post it in YouTube as well. Is to clone the repository. Um, this is a standard Next.js project. It does, oh, it does use a mono repo as well. Uh, so this is actually a mono repo plus turbo repo plus Next plus Prisma plus Tailwind plus Shads. I think it has Shads again. Could be wrong. Uh, plus there's one more thing. Skipped my head. Uh, Postgres. This is the stack for the project. Um, if you open a bunch of, you know, other open source repositories, fairly common stack, uh, what might change, nothing changes, what, might, yeah, nothing changes. This exactly, this is the stack, you know, in a bunch of places. Uh, yeah, yeah, nothing changes. It's like a very commonly used stack, basically. Um, if you look at the folder structure, it's, if you've gone through, you know, turbo repos generally, this might be simple to understand. If you have not gone through turbo repos, this might be hard to understand. Um, but let me take you through the packages and apps. There are not a lot, like six packages. Uh, I don't think we're using this. This contains all your Prisma logic. This contains all, I don't know, maybe some backend config. Yeah, which we're not even using anymore. Firebase, we can remove this. Um, quickly create an issue. Uh, what all packages do we have? Uh, store, which contains a bunch of recoil logic. I'm unsure how much recoil is being used. All the TypeScript configs and the core UI of the project. What does the UI mean? All these components, you know, this card component or I think the app bars as well exist here, could be wrong. Um, but yeah, this contains all the React components. Um, Harkirath, if this has all of this, where are the final end user apps? If you have gone through monorepos, you'll understand this will be like very, very simple. If not, this will be very difficult. So like feel free to pick and choose based on that. But the main core Next.js repository exists over here. It's in apps slash web. It contains, you know, most of your logic to uh, start the Next.js application locally. Um, if you look at the folder structure, app slash, you know, page.tsx. If you've gone through Next.js, you probably understand this, you know, like this. If you have not gone through Next.js, then this is very overwhelming. But this is the difference, you know, um, if you comprehensively have gone through all of these, maybe not ShadCN because we've not covered it, but everything else. If you've comprehensively gone through all of these, then at least the folder structure shouldn't be jarring. Harkira, what is this dot 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 PDF ID, dot 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 track ID? Again, if you've gone through all of these, then it shouldn't be jarring. If you've not, then it will be jarring. And you know, there's no third path here. There are two paths. If you have gone through them well, then you understand. If not, then don't, uh, then you don't. Uh, and what should you do if you don't? Just go through the classes and you know, first build smaller projects build the smaller medium application, then build a monorepo PTM, then try to look at this, which has everything. Given that let's clone the repository locally because you know, a lot of times you don't have to understand anything initially. You just have to follow the steps here and get the project up and running locally. That should be your first goal. Okay, I'm able to set up the project. What should you not do? Okay. Oh, this is the project. These are the issues. Someone just added an issue, remove Firebase from the project. So I will do this. I will go to packages. I will go to commons. I will go to source. I will go to Firebase and I need to delete this. So I will simply delete it from, you know, here. So there is a way to delete it from GitHub UI. Delete file. I will just delete it from here and create a pull request. You should not do this. You should first focus on setting it up locally. Why are Why should I not do this? This solves the issue. It solves the issue, but you don't learn anything. You, you, you know, provide someone value, which they could have just gotten by clicking a few buttons. So this is something you should not do. Um, clone the project locally, search for Firebase throughout the project. Make sure you've made the change everywhere. Don't rush to solve it is, is all I'm saying. Cool. Clone the project as simple as doing a git clone with the URL to the repository. What is the URL to the repository? It is this. So git clone. Once you've cloned the project, what is the next step? It depends on what kind of repository it is. It could be a Golang project, could be a Rust project, could be something else. Um, usually, you don't care. Most probably, 
the project that you're setting up, which in our case was daily dash code has some detailed steps to start it locally or even better, it has a Docker file. Okay, what is a Docker file? Again, you have skipped classes. We have understood Docker three times and one of the times you understood how to start projects locally using Docker Compose. So most good projects will have a Docker Compose file and all you have to do is Docker Compose up to start the project locally. This is not a good project, which is why it does not have it. Pretty sure it does not have a Docker file right now. Another good issue to add, probably there is an issue. Maybe there's a PR as well for this. There's probably a PR for this. I'm pretty sure there is. Yeah, someone has added it. I just haven't merged it. Um, which is why we'll go through the raw steps to start it. Harkirat, what do you mean raw steps to start it? I mean, we are not going to use Docker. Whenever you are starting a project locally, the first step is cloning the project. The second step is starting it locally. How can you start it? You can either start it using Docker if the project supports is this project does not what is the second way you can start it you can start by running it raw what does running it raw mean it means you will first install node.js on your machine then you will run npm install to install all the dependencies then you will build the project so on and so forth you will start the database locally yourself so this second thing is what we are doing ideally we should just use docker there is a pull request for it i haven't merged it as soon as i merged it it should be as simple as doing a docker compose up to start the project locally let's follow all the steps thankfully they've been given in a readme most of the times if you're setting up a project they will be given in a readme so let's open the readme quickly and follow the steps yarn install at the root folder Harkirat, I don't have yarn Google. How can you install yarn? If you have NPM, if you have node, it's very easy to add yarn as a package manager to your machine. Um, and if you want hand holding here, even though you shouldn't, it's NPM I dash yarn should probably install yarn on your machine. I've done the first step. I've done this step right here. CD daily code yarn install. What is the next step? It says CD packages slash DB go to the packages slash db folder this is wrong it shouldn't be slash packages but so you know feel free to pick that up as well and copy dot env dot example to env harkirat dot env dot example to dot env i am already you know jarred to the max i don't understand what are you doing here what is dot env dot example why would someone name a file dot env dot example why not dot env dot txt why not dot env dot js this also we have covered in a class. I can give a brief of why you do this, but we have covered this in a class. Okay. Wherever you are putting secrets, which usually is the .env file. For example, if I open this, either one of these, I've copied it over. It has a database URL. You don't want ke by mistake, you put a production database URL here and commit it to GitHub so that the world can look at your production GitHub or database URL. For that reason, you create a .env .example that you actually commit and the .env remains in git ignore. And even if you by mistake or, you know, intentionally put a dev db URL here, prod db URL here, it does not get ever committed to uh, GitHub. So that's what this step is. Then you replace this with a real Postgres URL. Let me just open this in uh, Visual Studio Code. So it's slightly easier to navigate. Feel free to open it in Visual Studio Code as well. So what have I done to quickly recap from the beginning of the class? I have cloned the repository and to start it locally, I have installed Node.js on my machine. I already had it. I ran npm install and now I'm following the rest of the steps given in the repository. What are the steps? The first step was copy dot env to dot example to dot env in this folder in packages slash db folder, not the root folder in the packages slash db folder. So packages slash db has a dot env file. Dot env dot example file, copy to copy it to dot env and replace the database URL. 
before you replace the database URL, what should you do? You should get a database, right? Um, so make sure you're able to get a database either from, you know, our trusted neon.tech or you can just start it locally using Postgres. I'm pretty sure I'm already, I don't have Docker running. So let me start Docker and then let me run a Postgres database locally um, because if you're trying to set up, you know, any project or specifically this project today, um, you will need a place where you store all the database. If you remember the tech stack, the tech stack had Postgres over here. So if it has Postgres, it means you need a database to be able to store all the data, even if you're running it locally. So you need to get a Postgres database. Uh, I am just going to use Docker to start it, but you know, feel free to uh, get one from neon.tech. Um, Docker run, um, I, de I deleted my history. I'll have to Google it. Docker run Postgres. I usually just reverse search. Harkiyat, what does reverse search mean? Press command R and search for, you know, for example, Redis or Docker. And it shows me all the Docker commands that I ran recently, but I recently deleted my bash history, which is why I have to go here and start it. Like find the command um, should be fairly straightforward. That looks right. This is the command that I'm running to start Postgres locally. Harkiyat, you started it immediately, happened too quickly. Um, yeah, it's actually fairly easy to start doc, uh, Postgres. Harkirat isn't the right way to start Postgres. This Postgres install Mac OS and then go here and then install, follow all the steps here and install it locally. Yes, you can do that as well. But in our class called actionable Docker, which is, you know, this class right here, we discussed how can you start it locally without, you know, getting Postgres locally, just use Docker to start it. And this is the command that you should run there. Docker run, give it a name. You don't have to give it a name. Feel free to skip this. Give it an environment variable called Postgres password, which is, you know, the password for this specific database. Start it in detached mode. And what are we starting? We are starting Postgres. This is a single command that I'm running to start Postgres locally uh, so that I can use it where in my .env file that I had just created this file right here quickly to recap one more time because you know i think too many things happen too quickly um i am here on step c i have in cloned the repository locally step one is done while starting it locally i have installed node.js i have run npm install i am now on the next step which what does the github repository say it says copy over .env.example to .env i have done that what is the next thing it says Update the .env with the database URL. I have started the database locally. I need to replace the URL. The question is, what should this URL be given the way I started Docker was, sorry, Postgres was by running a Docker command. If this feels very complicated, just go to neon.tech, log in over here, create a new project over here, call it test one, two, three or whatever and copy this Postgres URL um, to your .env file. Get a Postgres database for free from someone else. Don't start it locally, that works as well. Let me just do that for you know ease of understanding. Never share this with anyone. I know I'm sharing it on YouTube, but I will be deleting this database very soon. Um, but never share this you know with anyone. Ideally, just start it locally. Harkiyat, what should this string be if I start it locally by running the docker run command that you just showed what was the command this was the command and what will the database url be it will be this username will be postgres password will be whatever you passed here host would be localhost and db would be postgres so you can use either this or this based on where are you getting your database Ideally, just get it locally because it will be much faster as you run the project. If you get this, then it will be much harder for you to run the project somewhere else. Cool. Going to take a small mini break here for like 30 seconds um, and then proceed. We'll look at Q&A until then. Do port mapping. Did I not? Oh, he's right. Yeah, if you're running it locally, you need one more thing here. Um, you need a port mapping. 
dash p 5432 colon 5432. So if you're running it locally, make sure you have the port mapping as well, else it will not work. Harkirat, I thought ran it without the port mapping. Yes. So what you should do is docker ps followed by docker kill followed by run it again with the port mapping. If you don't have the port mapping, it will not work. Thank you to whoever posted that. It might also give you a conflict. So just feel free to remove the name argument. So this is your final command to run. And if you run this command and if Docker is running, sorry, Postgres is running locally for you, it, you will find it here, else you'll find it on whatever your cloud URL is. Let me just use cloud URL for ease of understanding for this one. Cool, Harkirat. We have done this. We have done this. The next step is this. What is this, Harkirat? I don't understand this at all. You have not gone through the Prisma class then. We need to migrate the database. We need to tell this freshly created database Okay, yeah, these are the tables that you need to have. This is some dummy data that you need to have so that whenever you start the project locally, you're able to see some you know data in there. If you don't seed your database, if you don't run the second command, you will not see any track over here. It will be an empty project for you. If you don't migrate your database or you know don't give it the right tables, then you're pretty much screwed, right? Your SQL table does not have the right tables. So again, covered in depth, in Prisma, feel free to read about Prisma and understand what both of these commands do. Let me quickly run them. Where do I need to run them? Packages slash DB. This, as you will see now, will take some time because it's migrating everything somewhere else versus if I was doing it locally, it would have happened fairly quickly. I think I can open QA now because this will take a decent chunk of time. Does installing yarn machine problematic generally or is it just my machine? Uh, it can be problem. I mean, it's machine specific. Sometimes even installing Node.js um, is problematic. So it's not m machine specific generally. Um, yeah, you'll find a way around it. Um, <laughs> can we dive into the Cal course that it has grown humongously? Yeah, let's start small though. Um, yeah. Why caching is not there in daily code? It does not need caching. It has static site generation. Um, we have covered this in a video, but everything that you see here on, you know, uh, projects.com is actually statically generated, including this page and, you know, each one of these tracks and every one of these pages. So nothing is hitting the database. I think these titles get, so yesterday the database went down, small story. The database went down yesterday. I changed the password, but the website was still up. Why? Because the website is generated statically. Only when the website is building, does the database get hit. Other than that, it's just a bunch of HTML files somewhere that, you know, you can just go through. Why is it created statically? Hello, hello, mic testing, sorry about that. My Zoom crashed, but I, oh, my OBS crashed as well. No, it's all good. Are we good, are we good to go, are we good to go, are we good to go? Working now, alrighty. Cool. Um, so what happened right now? My tables were created. My first command succeeded. Here, what was the first command? It was this command right here. How do you know this succeeded, Harkirat? I can just go to neon.tech. I can open my database. I can click on SQL editor. What did I do? Go went to neon.tech, went to my database and clicked on SQL editor on the left. Now I can run a bunch of SQL queries here just to see if things are working or not. So let me run a select star from tracks over here. If I run it, tracks does not exist. Track select star from track select start from problem it says query completed with no results it means i have a database the database has a problems table it has a track table it has no data in there yet i need to seed the data next that is what this command says npx prisma db seed Arkeet, what does this command do this command goes into db slash prisma slash seed dot ts and puts all the dummy data in the database. Have you dummy data? Yes. If you look at this file called seedsdata.js or json.ts, um, it has a bunch of, you know, database dump. It has a, a dump of our database at some point um, so that whenever someone is starting the project locally, they can put all of this data in their database so that they're good to go and, you know, they can see the same thing that you see on projects.100xsteps.com. This is what's called seeding of data. Okay, all this data that you see in the production database, 
you are able to get in your local database. So what is happening in the next step? If this was our prod DB, at some point we took all the data from the prod DB and brought it over to our project. Let's say, you know, GitHub project. We copied all the data from our production database, brought it over to the GitHub project. Where Harkirath, where did you bring it? We brought it on seed data.ts file that exists in packages slash db. All this data that you see here is a dump of the production database. What does seed.ts do? It gets all that data and pushes it to the database. Does a db.track.create. And here db, where does db come from? What is db.track? Again, this has been covered in Prisma. If you know Prisma, it should be fairly straightforward. Let's try to run the seed command one more time because it did fail the first time. Oh, I think I know why it might have failed. Actually, I don't know. But let's just run generate once. npx prisma generate to regenerate the client. I don't think this was the problem. But let's try to seed the database one more time. Let's see if it works now. Let me look at Q&A until then. Do we need to add prisma package to npm yarn in packages db? It should already be there unless it does have prisma, right? So package db prisma, uh, sorry, db slash package.json does have prisma as a dependency. Use yarn. I don't think that's the problem. Hydration failed. Someone just pushes in a PR for this. Uh, you can ignore the error if it works for you locally, but there is a PR uh, currently that fixes. Oh, it seems like it worked. I don't know why it failed the first time, but the only thing I changed was I regenerated the client and then I ran npx prisma db seed. What does this do? This seeds our database. Harkirat, what does seeding the database mean? If I now open neon.tech and do a select star from problem, you will see it has a bunch of problems over here. What is a problem, Harkirat? It is just a name that we kept for, you know, each of the page that you see here. So this page is one problem. It has a title, it has some body. And you know, this page is one problem, title, body, so on and so forth. So it has a bunch of problem. It also has a bunch of tracks. So if I do a select star from track, it shows me the CI CD track. I was able to migrate my database. That is all that you need. Um, iske baad, the last thing that's left is actually starting the project locally, which is going to be yarn dev. Um, so I'm going to do a CD dot dot CD dot dot CD apps slash packages, sorry, apps slash web, and then do a yarn run dev to start the project locally. If I go to local SQL 3000 now, I should see the project locally running on my machine with all the data seeded with on my personal database. So, you know, I can deploy it independently myself. That's open source, right? You can take someone else's code and deploy it. That's exactly what we're doing here. We took someone else's code. We're starting it locally. We've taken all the data also in this case, uh, but yeah, generally you don't want to take other people's data. Um, you want, you know, if you want to fork an open source project, you can, and you know, deploy it independently, just like we did. Um, but yeah, that's a brief. The project is running for you locally. If you open CI CD or any track over here, you should see, you know, the details of the track. You can filter them. So on and so forth. My machine is lagging a bit. Um, but yeah, that's how you start the project. F fairly straightforward. Uh, all I did was, you know, follow all the steps given in the readme. Um, and something happened here. My machine is lagging um, a little bit, not too much. Oh, this is the CI CD track. There you go. Then you go. You can yeah, pretty much play with it as much as you want. Um, but that's a brief of how you can start the project locally. Now the question is, how can I fix issues, Harkirat? Okay, let's pick a simple issue and try to fix it. Um, but before that, let me do a quick poll. Even if you weren't able to set up the project, were you able to understand how to set up the project by following the steps in the readme? Give me a yes or a no. Pretty decent. Cool. Yeah, this probably is the only time, you know, that we will be hand holding an open source project setup. Um, I mean, we will be for other projects, but like generally this is, you know, the thing you should do yourself. If you can't do even this much, right? If you can't even set up the project, then there is a problem, you know, and this is something you should always do yourself. Uh, 
fixing an issue, you can still take some help. But yeah, setting up is you know on you. Great. So we understand how to set the project up locally. Um, from here is solving a bunch of issues. For example, you know, um, let's see if there is a. For example, this is a very common you know thing in React. Okay, whenever you're iterating over things, you should pass them a key. So someone said there is a warning that comes. How can you fix this? Someone has already fixed it. Um, but yeah, how how would I fix it? What did they say? Key missing in tracks dot categories dot map. There is an error over here. It says warning: each child in a list should have a unique key prop. How would I solve this? I would first Google this error. If you have done React many times, then you have seen this error many times. If you have not done React many times, you will Google this error. It will tell you that hi, yar. Whenever you are iterating, whenever you are in React iterating over an array and rendering some things, you should give it a unique key. So you know something like this: item dot whatever is unique about every item which in this case you know what is the type of an item it has a category then it has an id so at item dot category dot id yeah this should solve the issue i'm assuming this is how that person solved the issue as well harkirat was this creating any problems no this wasn't really creating any problems it will lead to a perf performance hit in react which is why react is you know complaining so much about it in the logs um but even if you ignore it it's fine but it's a good thing to fix someone fixed it as well Seems like the same person who had reported it. Let's see what their fix was. Was it similar to what I did? Was it something else? This fixes two issues, not one. So let's see what both of them are. Updated the readme a bit. Prisma migrate dev. If previous commands fail, try these. Otherwise, skip. Why did you add this? Add this. I'll have to read through an issue, but yeah, as you can see, what did they do here? The other issue that they fixed was just gave a key key to that specific div that's being iterated upon. So this is right. Um, this I don't know why they added. So let me quickly check. It seems like it solved two issues, one ninety six and two one zero. So let's look at what two one zero is. One ninety six is. NPX is now is failing. Need help. Update my four. Cloned my repo. Did I install? Did this thing copied over? Replace this thing. Npx was mine. Here is where it failed. What do you see? Prisma generate can't find module. Prisma build index dot js. I'm using Windows machine. I ran this issue solution. Then run yarn add Prisma. Someone else also said this. Packages db Prisma. Packages db. Prisma, यहाँ पे add Prisma. Yes, not the seed. These helped creating a PR for these. Okay, that's why they did it. Seems like on Windows you have to do an extra step. But the question is, did they really add it in the readme? I don't see the that specific step. Is this right? Or do we need to add more things from here? But yeah, that's a brief of you know how you solve issues. Uh, cool. So from here, I will just take a poll. We can do a few things. We can review pull requests because as you can see, there are thirty-two, which is a lot. Um, or we can just do a Q and A. I guess this is yeah decent enough options. Let's do either a Q and A or I can you know solve a bunch of issues myself as well. So let's see. What should we do? Harkirat solves issues. Um, Harkirat reviews PRs or. Uh, Simp simple Q and A. Alrighty. Launch. So, let me look at YouTube as well. Rainy weather. Sometimes people are just chatting. I guess. All right, let's see. Oh wow, pretty skewed. Oh God. So it's very skewed. Uh, not skewed. It's very you know mediocreish. So it's third forty percent. Hakeem has solved issues. Thirty five percent. Hakeem reviews PRs. So yeah, let's just ignore the last one. Um, let's do a combination of me reviewing pull requests and me solving them. Um, let's start with me solving them. 
so let's see if there is i wanted to go through the lead code issue um but okay, let's go to it towards the end um what can i solve um my internet connection is unstable uh, is what zoom is telling me and i can feel it because issues won't open for me there we go uh someone can pick this up uh, this is just remove it from apps as well you know remove all usages of firebase from package.json um we don't need it anymore um improve key binding let's see what that is improve key binding for search improvement can I work on this already solved it have an issue the thing is most issues here are already picked up um okay two people added this as well let's review this really quickly because so the project was initially on firebase in fact this project was actually built in a youtube live like the initial so yeah there you go this is you know i tried i read the issue i quickly sprinted no no not to you know this is also a great issue but you know this is the better solve remove all of this remove from the git ignore as well removed backend slash firebase dot json removed the backend folder completely basically because you know you don't need this backend folder anymore yeah you can just remove this completely by the way um package of json remove firebase as a dependency common remove firebase everywhere so this is a better way to solve the issue i just posted remove firebase um you know, but there are 10 different usages of it um this one you know better way to do it um this is yeah this is one comment here um and then it's good to go which is um remove the backend folder completely yes pretty much it uh what else can we solve or review let's try to solve an issue and then you know i'm sure someone has already solved it so we can you know look at how they fixed it basic description adding functionality for you to navigate back to the home page by clicking on a logo or header this is a standard feature to improve usability um problem there is no way of going back to the home page showing all the slides i think there is a way where so you can unselect it if i'm not wrong but selected unselected selected unselected i can navigate back you have to click on yeah exactly okay so this can be closed toaster not working in delhi i have noticed toaster is not properly configured in the app i found this mistake i wanted to work on it okay let's see toast for those of you who don't know is this is thing that you see at the you know bottom right from time to time um but it seems like there is an issue while setting it up uh what is happening here this pr is there's something wrong here i think there's just this is it's just not up to date um is this pr my internet is dying um is this pr up to date bunch of changes unrelated cool let's just try to bring this down to zero today either close or request a review at the very least correct path for the file this looks good i think this is something i just asked Yep, yep, yep. No bounty for this, so this is like a fairly straightforward issue. The problem with bounties is that I feel bad now not giving bounties, but at the same time I don't want to give one dollar bounties. I think there's like more overhead, and there's no benefit of you know giving out a five dollar or one dollar bounty. Um, I think the minimum I want to give is ten, uh, which is why you know small issues will probably just you know get ignored. Um, P read by Dave, I think that is right. Um, I think that was the. error that you were getting yeah exactly okay i am not testing this but seems even if it isn't right you know doesn't cause any visual changes um fix the readme file these are all simple changes let's get to the lead code one very soon i think this one's already done um so yeah remove file base going to close this one this was a simple one i think yeah this is yeah this is a simple one category bar fixed responsiveness added drop down to it i like this one i mean yeah we should just merge this um 
yeah as you can see the projects this gets really bad um so they just converted it into a drop down um yeah we can like work on it later on there are a lot of changes though what's up here package lock so we've like sort of we're forcing you know yarn to be used in this project so please get rid of package lock dot json this is the problem with remote work there's so much back and forth um now i told him this now he will fix this you know in a few hours then you know i will come back to it in four hours so keeps on happening um fixed toaster configuration i i think i already saw this but commented on it is there a way to mark them as done or something um let's get to the lead code issue guys this is a big one nimith did this yesterday um, a lot of people were trying this there are a few approaches to build lead code um we are picking the leanest one um and i think uh i think a v1 is done so this is where the issue was created like two weeks ago when we started to add data structures and algorithms to the cohort um soham is taking the classes but you know in every class we want to let people submit the problem right there eventually add you know some bounties competitions things like these um so you know decent issue to pick um there's already a code type that exists that shows code on the right and problem statement on the left so when we were initially creating daily code it was actually being created as lead code which is why you know there is already a ui that shows a problem statement on the left and a code snippet on the right um as a good starting point and what we need to do is add an admin dashboard where admins can add problems titles and test cases um and on the user side users can see you know the problem statement on the left which is you know if they go to this specific class and you know there is a problem over there for example you know this good pairs problem the explanation is on the left and there is a area on the right for them to be able to you know edit it um a few people tried this so this is the first implementation the problem here was it did not follow the fact that you know this was already done a bit i mentioned this a few times i mentioned over here okay you know call out we already have the code type uh, i think this was like a fresh ui that was built so that's you, it's you know it's a mild yellow flag you need them to integrate in your code base um you know in the i'm not saying this is what happened here but in the go to code as quickly as possible or you know merge as quickly as, as quickly as possible um you know uh you you shouldn't independently create the project um uh, if the, this was the case maybe that was not the case oh and the, the, maybe that that was not the case i don't know but either way yeah um that's why i skip this um and then piston okay this is piston don't know it's a good or not okay yeah so yeah this is the other thing i was talking about okay, you know there are a bunch of open source not open source like a bunch of apis that let you do code submissions um jad zero is one this person recommended a different one called piston i think this is the right way to you know build this initially eventually you can bring it in house and you know have your own code execution engine um, but not as a v1 so finally nimit said he's working with it, integrating it with jad zero i think he chose jad zero because that was the one i've recommended in the past in another issue um i think both of them are working right now um on it yeah as i said feel free to yeah like multiple implementations don't matter in the end you know you can collaborate figure it out uh, rakshit posted a schema this felt wrong to me at a very quick look because you know not every problem will have test cases um problem needs to have a type this actually might be right um every problem can have test cases this is actually fine if the type of the problem is you know code then you can have a bunch of test cases for those of you who don't understand what test cases are um how many of you already know how lead code pay problems are created do you already know how lead code problems are created how are they evaluated do you understand test cases do you understand how a, an algorithmic problem competition platform is created already yes or no it's a 50 50 so yeah this is like one you know extra knowledge that you need to have before you build something like this uh, whenever you're building something like lead code you know where this is your lead code ui this is your uh, the jargon that we're learning right now is test cases and what they are um whenever you're building something like lead code if this is your ui that has the you know problem statement on the left problem statement on the left and you know your code execution editor on the right and a button over here that says submit 
have you ever wondered how what happens when you click on submit you've given it a bunch of code but how is it being evaluated is it someone who's reading the code ki yeah, there is a person sitting here who's reading all of your code and you know figuring out ki acha this algorithm looks right or is there a different way to evaluate the code how do you know ki the int main whatever cpp code that you've written see out you know hi i've got been a while endel and then you know return zero whatever code you've written how do you know if it's right or not if it solves this problem statement or not and the answer is test cases every problem statement whoever is writing the problem statement let's say someone wrote you know given an array uh, find the max value in the array return minus 1 if the array is empty if someone has created this problem statement um when a user submits their code there is no easy way to evaluate if their code is right or not so what usually people do is they create test cases ki yaar this problem ka there are three test cases first test case is the array looks something like this 1 2 3 4 5 and the answer for that first test case what should be the answer for the first test case it should be 5 because 5 is the maximum value in this specific array and similarly you can have you know multiple test cases bigger test cases you will have you know very big array you will have edge cases ki what if there is an empty array and then the answer should be minus 1 so on and so forth so whenever you are creating something like lead code whoever is setting the problems should also you know create a bunch of test cases then these test cases should run on a right code on a correct code that usually the author has created the author will create some code that author code will give you the actual output author code will give you the actual output kya acha for this input this is the output for this input this is the output and you will store all of these test cases in your database whenever a user comes to your website and clicks on submit you will run their code on the same test cases and you will see is the output same and if the output is same for all of them is when you say your submission is accepted if the output is different for any one of them then you say your submission is rejected har kirat so you are saying ki whenever i go to lead code and i submit a problem it is running on some test cases only some 30 40 test cases yes so har kirat then i can spoof i can have an incorrect solution yet have an ac an accepted solution yes you can that's why there is this concept of hacking in code forces right ke some the author wrote a bunch of test cases you might have written a some code that passes these test cases what if i write code like this ke you know if r of 0 equal to 1 and r of 1 equal to 2 so on and so forth then return 5 ke bhai then the answer is 5 what if i hard code all the test cases over here and then just submit then your it will still give you an ac it will still give you an accepted because it passed for these test cases hark you this to means like you can get away by getting writing wrong code yes which is why your test cases should be very solid it should cover a lot of edge cases it should have you know a very big length very small length zero length negative characters so on and so forth so so every problem needs to have a test case which is why if you look at the schema it says here now the problems will have three types blog a simple blog what is a simple blog something like this or a code type and if it is of a code type then it will have multiple test cases ki at this test case mein given this input which can be a string for example you know if it's an array then it can simply be something like you know this array stringified um and then the accept expected output given that input which again could be an array could be a string doesn't matter um so you know every problem will now have a test case associated with it um or like multiple test cases this like a one to many relationship every problem can have multiple test cases associated with it whenever the user clicks on submit we you test against each one of these test cases so this schema actually looks right um and submission yeah this is another thing a user can submit multiple times when the user comes to the website similar to lead code and makes 10 submissions let's say they probably want to see their existing submissions so you know that is why there's a submissions schema as well which will be associated to a problem okay, given this problem this user has made this specific you know submission uh where submission result is kr for this submission whether it passed or not it should not be a boolean it should be a an enum which has types like ac tle um 
memory used time used so on and so forth um but this is a great start you know this this is how you would design the schema um and this looks also pretty good so rakshit like feel free to so you rush hit feel free to like proceed working on it even though nimit is working on it also feel, feel free to work on it um we can find a way to you know merge together um either way create a draft pr i told this nimit yesterday as well create a draft pr so i can at least make sure you're you know working on the right thing um bunch of other people f- worked on it uh, h singh also commented with you know what the schema should look like um and then eventually nimit created message me yesterday he has created a pr um i have uh, code submission yes yeah so when else has, yeah it seems like everyone's creating this now uh, like a lot of people have created this um let's look at nimit's pull request really quickly um and see what he has done his solution is at least ui wise fairly elegant if you look at it it looks something like this um so as you can see problem statement description on the left or your submissions very similar to lead code you can submit code or run code very similar to lead code and you know when the user runs code it runs on various test cases that you can see oh play there you go and you know you can yeah, expand retract S- simple stuff um shatsian makes this like fairly simple i'm assuming that's what's being used here um why is my video pausing again and again yeah you get the idea i mean this is what the ui looks like video isn't working for me um but yeah let's look at the code for this what code did he write and this is the first time i'm reading the code as well this is going to be a fairly big pull request which is why i asked him to create a draft because it's usually a good idea to you know merge these incrementally otherwise he'll be stuck with a lot of pull requests uh, sorry a lot of lot of merge conflicts um update the readme unsure why update this unsure why oh he added this next public judge zero api url um for those of you who don't know um as i said there are a lot of external libraries there are a lot of you don't you can build lead code like this there is a video that we discussed this in just go to the latest video on the channel you will find how to build lead code in house but you generally at least initially don't want to build it in house you want to use an external service that can handle it for you that is what we are using today called judge zero you send judge zero is a it's actually open source you can self host it or you can use their offering to you know pay them a little bit for them to host either way you can give it some code and then you know it will return back to you okay given this code um this was the output this was the time it took was there a time limit exceeded so on and so forth so we are just using judge o as an api for execution we are not doing execution in house why are kirat uh, generally you should do this if someone has built this use it if at scale it becomes expensive you bring it in house there is no point of over engineering at least you know for something like this where you know two weeks ago we had this it's still not done we really need this as soon as possible because you know dsa classes are happening every week uh, so you know you should always not reinvent the wheel which in this case we aren't we're using judge zero which is why he's added you know a judge zero url in dot env because this is where our backend would eventually hit to do submissions and you know get back responses he has self hosted it as i said judge zero is open source so you can self host it on your machine or you can use their api or something like you know paid dot judge zero dot com that lets you you know pay them a little bit for every api call and they handle deploying it scaling it scaling down for you a route to get all the users submissions you know get a submission id uh this looks wrong no auth this would just let anyone get a submission yeah that looks wrong you yeah, user shouldn't be able to get each other's submissions um api code submission dot ts yes, this probably seems like the one that will you know actually yeah no this is for fetching submissions where is the end point there you go there is a post end point which takes source code the language id because you know you could have a javascript language c++ language and the problem statement id as an input um gets the problem from the database if the problem doesn't exist tells the user gets the test cases and main function name from the database again test cases dot map 
source code is this language ID is this expected output is this creates a bunch of creates an array like an in-memory array with this is the user's source code plus get input string test case dot inputs main function name this is going to be interesting slash n console dot log function name Alex dot join this thing yeah so what he's doing is so this seems like this only supports JavaScript right now um, which is fine should this take language ID as input and be based on the which um, yes yeah, so what he does right now is you know calls the function and just appends that to the source code if this is the source code that the user gave you you add KR uh, call the function and you know get output it on std out so you can get it back from jet zero this should also change um, do we need to do a uh, api url this is the api url to do batch submissions to jet zero um, send the api call get the response get a bunch of tokens the way that jet zero works is you you know it's highly asynchronous you tell it this is the code that i'm submitting it doesn't immediately give you the output it tells you you know here is an id some random id track the submission using this id and then you have to pull it again and again kr is my submission with this id done is my submission with this id done uh, you know every few seconds and then whenever it is done it will tell you because someone else's code could take one second 10 seconds 20 seconds you don't know um, which is why it doesn't in the initial request return you the response okay, this was the response this was the time that it took it gives you an id you slowly pull it so yeah that's just a brief about jet zero and that's probably what's happening here um, okay you know you're storing all the tokens that you got from the backend in this token map and token string equal to this thing process submission set timer then every one second you are some you are asking judge zero most probably is this done is this done is this done and then let's see what fetch submissions does probably just hits judge zero again this is in a different file yeah this is going to be like really hard to review fetch submissions yeah, there you go slash submission slash batch and this time we're sending a get request and then you know it will return back the ones that are processing the ones that are processed um and then if processing not length if there are still some that are being processed then you refetch all the submissions um after a delay after one second you probably add back of here All right. Um, let me take a pause here. I think this is this is going to be very long to review, and I'm sure most of you have lost track of what's happening here. So let me take a pause um, and let's discuss. It's 8:14 already. Um, how are we doing, guys? Are we doing good? Yes or no? Give me a no if you don't understand anything, or like you know, don't understand a little bit. How are we doing? Yeah, so 50-50 as expected. Yeah, feel free to. So I'll take a pause here. Uh, not review this anymore. Um, Let's see what else we can do. Um, let's take a small break for two minutes um, and then we will proceed. Um, there's not much to do anyways. Uh, this was pretty much the class or orientation plus a bunch of, you know, code reviews. Wish I could have done more code reviews, but I'm sure the easier code reviews are anyways easy to understand. Um, let's quickly look at, you know, a few easier ones and then we can go from there. This one, for example, changed it from buttons to a select. So if you look at all the categories, um, they now can be selected via uh, a select rather than a button um this should probably only happen on mobile i still feel but let, let's look at how he changed it but let me also comment you know when the screen is larger then you can show the user a bunch of these and then when the screen is smaller you can just you know create a toggle um but let's look at how he did it yeah fairly simple right rather than iterating over all the categories and rendering a button he created a select with 
all the categories and iterating over them here so it's like if you know react hopefully like this is fairly easy to understand rather than iterating and rendering a button we are iterating and rendering a select um the only thing i would comment here is can we do this conditionally if screen width is less than lg maybe render the select but yeah these kind of issues are like appreciated they might not get merged i still might close it um but you know good way for you to practice okay, do you understand it um and you know i myself also might be adding a bunch of issues here let's see if there's more um add bookmark feature that lets users this will be a big one to review um bookmark when they're logged in this is a this is someone uh, this is something people someone added there as well in daily uh, in uh, in cms but yeah this also is a again i don't know if this is needed a lot of these i don't know uh, my only concern with this like building something like this in open is you know it over it gets over engineered we had too many features because you know everyone wants to add a feature but this still seems you know like a decent itch uh, decent ish issue to add um let's see how they solve it i'm assuming you know let's start from the database let's see how they change the database and go from there um if you look at the database changes they've added they added a new model called bookmarks here for a bookmark there will be a user id and a track id this user has this track bookmarked um and if you look at why were these added verification token has track which has which is of type bookmark this looks wrong like this looks there's no reason for track which is a bookmark array to be in verification token uh this looks right i think they was they were trying to add it here they by mistake added it here um but yeah this is the real change okay every user will have a bunch of bookmarks and every bookmark is associated with a user and a track okay, this user is associated with this track and then given you have this database schema um i'm assuming everything else is straight forward they added a bookmarks/page.tsx which fetches all the bookmarks for the user get all book bookmarked tracks it should probably be paginated if you are adding it probably paginated um yeah a bunch of things that probably don't need to be here um but yeah, i am assuming this is also this is like a very simple full stack feature right you let me just comment it you are adding something to a backend you are creating a ui for it so if you want to practice full stack you know issues like these are decent um, again a lot of these might not get merged because they just might over engineer the platform but you get the idea um all right responsiveness key binding feature urgent add track route create track route yeah i'll take a pause here guys i think Uh, it's a lot to cover for one day how we doing uh, let me open chat any questions guys uh, relate to the class or otherwise i think we can take a pause here and you know call it after this but any questions relate to the class or otherwise chat is open um let's see oh what are some asked um most of the issues get picked assigned immediately can i go ahead and create pr and learn something new yes don't create a duplicate pr but you know try to solve these issues yourself can't understand code knowledge gaps are you should spend some time if you've gone through all the videos this should be like a fairly it's a very simple code right and doesn't do much uh, so it should be very easy to understand what's back off back off means you know if something does not give you an answer then you shouldn't ask it the answer again in one second you should back off a bit after 2 seconds ask the response did not give it then after 4 seconds add for a response ask for a response so on and so forth um I have joined the course yesterday. I don't know much of Mern. Should I, you should watch zero to one, or you know one to hundred. Maybe you can enjoy the first part where we're drawing a bunch of numbers, but you'll be a little confused later on. Um, we can just use Markdown as input for the problem statement. I have text images for the problem statement. Yes, we can use Markdown. We use Notion. I am conflicted between which one of them to choose, but we use Notion right now, so that's the one we're going with. Markdown is probably a better choice. 
to keep it you know less dependent on a platform did you just say web3 cohort a while back i did uh, we might be doing it yeah we'll see it feels like all the repos are too crowded now yes which is why you move to something else it wasn't crowded up until you know two months ago no one was doing it but the people who were doing it got referred so you know that's the whole point of you know you need to be hard working but you need to be a little bit smart as well uh seems like there's a very big lag on youtube um currently i'm okay spnet how much rent per seb square seb square was very small office was 24000 rupees a month like a six seater sold expenses i have answered that all right one more set of questions guys then we'll call it i think the class is done for today uh, i will see you guys next week when 0200 officially starts actually starts this was just an ad hoc extra class uh, let it flow though let it flow wow youtube is like lagging really bad um start from the top hi hakira i recently joined zero to 100 can you guide me to suggest how to take zero to one and get on pace for one to hundred um yeah just sprint through the projects i would say you know if you already know coding a bit videos are going to be a little bit slow um so you know pick and choose which video you're watching there are like categories on every video so just skip through them and quickly build a lot of projects i've created a library for pdf generation from notion record map and i did it on a server but very confused should i add it or not like will we be overdoing it like it's already done should i go for it generally a good project to be done uh, but yeah i was saying a bunch of speculative use cases you can build uh, that you know let you mint some token uh, based on how much work you've done for example you can build a decentralized lead code even though don't build it but what will happen now in lead code everyone will be you know submitting a bunch of problems when so many people submit problems we will need to buy a bunch of machines or rent a bunch of machines on ec2 what if students could themselves you know rent their machines out for submissions um and you know get some token for it uh, if they if you solve 100 submissions um let me quickly screen share but i hope that's this is like clear to understand but, you know this is what sort of deep in is it's like decentralized infrastructure right um so what you can do is okay whenever we build lead code let's say um if this is a student in or person in you know maharashtra who has a laptop um and then there is another user in chandigarh who has a laptop um and there is a platform like lead code there is a platform like lead code where people are submitting like crazy people are like there's a competition going on people are submitting problem statements 1 2 3 4 5 you know and clicking the submit button very well you can either run their submissions on an aws machine or you can run their submissions on some person's laptop in maharashtra doesn't matter right as long as it has 4 gb ram and you know some specific hardware uh, you can run it on some random people's machines why would random people give you their compute in lieu for some token so what you can do you have to find a way to prove ke yaar maharashtra mein jo banda tha he actually solved the lead code problem and got back a result for a user and if they did you give them some you know 0.01 token or one token of your things on and so forth so use cases like these are a third use case what is another good use case in crypto that you can build right now um you can build like rpc aggregators there are a lot of rpc some of them are slow um and you know aggregate them give the user a better they like bunch of such projects you can build something like matrix shards a great project um if you haven't seen it it lets you link your wallets and then you know connects to telegram discord things like these does verification yeah there are like a lot of lot of use cases you can build um things like these but yeah a lot of web3 will come on the channel now so you know there will i'm sure be a video projects to build which you can just look at all right man 6 year of experience looking for a job um there was no question there but yeah the advice remains the same like anyone else um you know build a lot of projects um and build them yourself will sohan teach c++ when probably he will i'm unsure when though i'll have to ask um is it okay build projects from seeing tutorials for javascript mastery please answer initially it is it's totally fine for you to look at problems from uh, tutorials and answer them there is no need for you to you know um code it yourself in fact you cannot code it yourself initially um but at some point you need to eject out um so just keep that in mind you know at some point you are able to code it yourself else you will be stuck in, stuck in 
the very common term called tutorial hell um which you know it doesn't lead anywhere uh, there are a lot of videos on it yeah cool all right guys i think i'll call it here my wifi is very dilly dally um and it's 8:30 we did not take a break and that's pretty much mostly all i had for the orientation um i will see you guys next week when we will be doing a bunch of um ad hoc not ad hoc we'll, do, we'll follow the tutorial a lot of questions wow okay we'll take one more round of questions i have two commits on the toaster pr please check i will um like i will eventually after, maybe after the class um uh, any timeline of web3 cohort i am unsure yet um it's, it's depends on you know if people want it right now after the 100 cohort my personal commitments so we will see um off topic off topic okay last set of questions here a bunch of questions from notion docs um two doubts i'm working on a multi vendor e-commerce application similar to Dukan got it. it. Consists of a main website for browsing seller stores, a seller dashboard, an admin dashboard, and an onboarding platform for new sellers. Okay, all these platforms are managed on a single Node.js server. Sounds okay. I have two questions regarding this infrastructure. Firstly, considering I have deals with sixteen sellers and each seller will have minimum four hundred users, what RAM or what VM should I rent on AWS, leading towards just lowering the cost? Firstly, your admin slash seller dashboards should be a separate backend, and your user facing uh, backend should be separate. Why? Because it's highly unpredictable. When user load comes on a specific website, it is very predictable. Okay, you know, people are not a lot of merchants; they're not opening the website too much. You probably need a single machine, throw it away. For the user side. you need auto scaling if you have 16 customers and one customer gets a lot of users other customers ideally shouldn't get affected right so at the very least you should auto scale your user side and for that does not matter choose a simple on aws maybe like a t3 medium or a t3 large um or an x large maybe like basically 16 gb with 16 clients i'm assuming you can afford that much but make sure you're auto scaling it if the cpu requirement goes above 50% make sure another server starts up digital ocean does not let you do auto scaling very easily from my knowledge from up until 2 years ago but you can use a kubernetes cluster that auto scales there so create a kubernetes cluster in digital ocean 